Right, hey guys, it's Weston here. So today I'm going to be reviewing the Wiley Fox Storm. So I'd just like to say a massive thank you to Wiley Fox for sending this out to review. Now, if you've been with my channel a while, you know I have reviewed the smaller version, the Wiley Fox Swift. So this is the bigger, more expensive version. But can it impress me as much as the Swift did? So I guess you'll have to stay tuned to find out. Now, I'm going to be doing this review a little bit differently and talking about what I dislike, what is just okay, and what I like about the phone. So let's just jump straight in and talk about what is okay with this phone. So the first thing that is just okay about this phone is the camera. Now the camera is a 20 megapixel Sony sensor, which I was expecting big things from, but it actually did fail to deliver. Also around the front, it's got an 8 megapixel camera with a flash. Pretty decent for selfies, but not spectacular. Again, like the rear camera. So now we get onto some actual camera samples and you can see they're not the best. I mean, this shot, the dynamic range looks pretty impressive. Colours again look pretty nice, but if you look in the corners, you can see it's really a sort of out of focus and there's quite a lot of noise, even in decent light. So you can see the next shot here, we've got one with HDR and one without. And you can see the one without HDR actually doesn't look too bad. Again, colours look pretty nice, pretty natural. And you can see we've got a little bit of a lens flare as well, which looks pretty cool. Then we go to HDR mode and to be honest, it's made the image look a little bit worse in my opinion. Usually HDR makes things a little bit better, but in this case, I think it's made it a little bit worse. This sample here is actually really nice. It's like color accuracy looks good. We've got a nice bit of separation between the subject and the background. It's a little bit overblown in the background, but pretty solid. Again, we've got a really nice picture here. We've got good amounts of detail. You can see the text really nice. It does look a little bit too sharp in some places, but not too bad. Then it's, we get onto the problems I'm having with the camera, and it's not color accuracy or anything like that. It's actually focusing. So you can see this shot of the flower here, it's actually not captured focus properly, even though it looked like it did on the phone. Again here we've actually got another pretty decent shot here and it did actually capture the uh, flower pretty well. And again we've got a nice bit of bokeh in the background, but again it's not overly impressive. And then this last shot here of another flower, you can see again, tried getting a bit of a macro shot on this one, and it just refused to focus. So that's why the camera is both good and bad, which makes it okay. Then we get onto video quality, and again, it's not that impressive. Uh, you can see a sample here of the front-facing camera, and again, I mean, it's not great. You can see it's really uh, sort of focused in on your face, and it doesn't get much of the background in, and it's also a little bit grainy as well. Then we get round to the rear-facing camera, and again, it's not that impressive. I mean, colours and stuff look pretty accurate to how they were on the day, but again, it's just not great quality, it's a little bit wobbly, and it's just not that impressive, to be honest. If you want some more samples of the front-facing camera, you can just see the intro and the outro of the video will be filmed with the front-facing camera as well. So the next thing that is just okay is the UI. Now, I know in the Swift review I said the UI is fantastic and actually one of my preferred UIs, but this one has its issues. Now if you want to see more information about what Cyanogen 12.1 can do and uh, what it's actually like and some of its features then check out the video linked in the description and that will just let you know what Cyanogen is capable of when it's actually implemented really well. So the UI actually is really nice and I mean it's the same as the Swift so you're getting a really clean minimalist look, you're getting the same really nice uh, app drawer as well that you actually swipe up and down and it's got some really cool features in there as well and it's just a really nice UI I mean it's near enough stock Android but it does have its own little things put into it that makes it Cyanogen and makes it a little bit different and unique from Android now we get on to the issues what I've been having and the first one is the charging issue now, while the Fox have noted this and they are working on an update, which should be coming soon, but when you're actually charging the phone, you get this little glitch. Now, when it gets to around 97, 98%, you actually get a little glitch in what it says, from like 97 to charged, to 97 to charged, and so on. And it's just a little weird glitch that is something I wasn't really expecting to experience on a phone. The next issue I found is the missing battery information. Now again, Wiley Fox have acknowledged this issue and it will be fixed in the update. 
but unfortunately I've not been able to test how good the battery is. Now this is because the battery information is completely missing. You can see the normal graph, but you're not actually getting any information about your screen on time or what apps you're actually using the battery. So unfortunately I've not been able to gauge how impressive the battery is and I will talk more about the battery in a minute. Another issue I found with the UI is actually a couple of crashes. Now with the Swift I didn't notice any crashes and it was a really good experience. But in this one I've noticed that there has been areas where it is actually crashing. Now it's usually when I'm actually gaming. So for example when I was playing Asphalt 8 I was just playing. Next minute it crashed, it went to a black screen. I could still hear the audio in the background but the screen was just black. So I had to turn the phone on and turn it back on again to get it to work again. So now speaking of the battery, so this has a 2500 mAh battery in it. I think it's actually the same battery that's used in the Swift, which kind of was a bad decision in my opinion. I mean the battery was really impressive on the Swift because it had lower end specifications. This is much higher end, so I was actually expecting at least a 2700 or higher battery in this. But again, like I said, I've not been able to test the battery fully because... I couldn't see actually how much screen on time I'm getting. Now I can get through a day's medium use, so that's a YouTube, email, social media, a phone call or two, and it, yeah, it actually gets me through a day, but again, I'm not sure how much screen on time I'm actually getting and which apps are actually draining the battery the most. The next thing that is just okay is the build quality. Now in some places it's really well made and in some places it's not. So the overall construction does feel solid, there's uh, no flex in the chassis or anything and it does feel generally well put together. The only issue I found are the uh, power and volume rocker. These are just a little bit wobbly actually and they do rattle a little bit as well. Again, it's just these little issues that make it go from good to okay. It's not a deal breaker but it's just something worth noting. So now we move on to the things that I actually do like about the phone and the first one is the design. Now the design of this phone is actually something a little bit different from what you're used to seeing. Now I get the form factor and the shape and the sort of general style of the phone is pretty similar to what other companies are doing but then it's the aesthetic details that make it different. So for example I mean around the front it's pretty plain you've got your LED flash, your earpiece, your sensor and your camera. So nothing really uh, to stand out there. It's actually when you flip the phone around the back and you get to see where Wiley Fox sort of stands out from the crowd. So you can see around the camera module up top we've got a really nice sort of bronze effect accent and I just think it's really cool. And then moving down into the middle we've got the Wiley Fox emblem which again some people have said that they don't really like. I think it's actually pretty cool. Then we move down a little bit and we've got the Wiley Fox branding and they cut out for your rear firing speaker. But then obviously you've got your regular things like up top you've got your 3.5mm jack and then at the bottom you've got your USB charging port and your primary microphone. So that's pretty much standard amongst Android phones but it's just like I said the aesthetics that make it a little bit different. Then we get on to the next thing I like and that is the screen quality. So this is a 1080p panel, it's IPS, it's 5.5 inches which gives you 400 ppi and it's actually a really nice display. The only thing I have noticed that I don't like is it's a little bit on the warm side, so that means that whites have a little bit of a yellow tinge to them. Again, not a deal breaker, but something worth noting. But with an IPS panel, you do get really great viewing angles. Color accuracy is much better than AMOLED. Uh, unfortunately though, colors aren't as vibrant or uh, saturated. Blacks are pretty nice. Again, not as deep as AMOLED, but pretty respectable. And like I said, just colour accuracy and stuff is fantastic. Next up we get on to audio. And like the Swift, it's actually got some pretty cool audio features. So one of those is Audio FX. And this is actually a audio with software suite built into the phone. So you can actually turn this on and off if you want to. And you've got a couple of EQ settings on here as well. So you've got like flat and heavy metal and hip hop. And you can actually do a custom one as well to really uh, get the audio how you want it. Then we get round onto the rear speaker and unfortunately it is rear firing but it's actually pretty good quality. It goes loud, it's pretty clear, it's got a little bit of depth to it as well. So I'm just going to give you a quick sample now.
So the next thing I really like is storage. Now that's not something I usually talk about much, but this has 32 gig built in, which is pretty respectable for its price. But then you can actually expand that up to 128 gig. So if you've got a massive app uh, collection and a big music library, this will hold it all and then more as well. So if you're a big media user, this phone can handle it all. Then the final thing that I really do quite like about the phone is the performance. Now, under the hood, we've got a Snapdragon 615, an Adreno 405, and 3 gig of RAM. So performance-wise, it's actually really good. The UI flows really nice, and because it's not a heavy skin UI and there's nothing slowing it down, it's really fluid, it's really responsive. Yes, it does have its issues, but it's actually really respectable. Then we get onto stuff like gaming performance. And apart from the occasional crash like I've mentioned already, the gaming performance is actually really smooth, it's really fluid, and I wouldn't say it's the best gaming performance I've ever had, but it's up there with the best, especially at this price as well. So then we move on to things like multitasking, and again, it's really fluid, it's really quick, and you can uh, switch between apps relatively quickly without much lag. So all in all for performance, I'm actually really impressed. Right guys, so that just about wraps it up for this review. So what do I think of the Storm? Well, I would say it's got potential. Now at the minute it's got a few issues which are stopping it from being a great phone. Like I said already, the Swift is probably a better experience for the price. This is a little bit more expensive than the Swift and I just think it's not as good a package to be honest. I mean, the Swift was a much more polished experience. And for £200, I was actually expecting the phone to be much better than the Swift, when in fact, I actually think the Swift is a better phone. And also for £200, you can get phones like the OnePlus X, which I have reviewed, and that is just a much more polished experience, and you do seem to get more for your money there as well. So, yes, it's a good phone, it does have its issues, it's got potential to be a great phone, and I do know Wiley Fox is working on some fixes, so hopefully that will be implemented and sort the problems out. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to test those because this phone's got to go back to them. But if you do get a Wiley Fox Storm and you get the update, let me know down in the comments if it has actually fixed these issues because I'd really be interested to know. Right guys, so that is it for this review. So should you actually get one of these phones? At the minute, as it stands, I would say wait until the updates come. Wait for some more reviews to come out and see if the update has actually sorted the problems out. Right, so again, that is it for this review. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for more videos coming very soon. Uh, hit that like button as well if you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment if you want to. Uh, thanks again and I will see you all on the very next video.